I want to show you an article. I'm guessing most of you have heard it, seen it, read about it already. But uh, for good or evil, it's the first time I saw it just now. And I want to share it with you and go through it for the very first time. I didn't even read the article. It's from uh, uh, SwordWarsStrategies.com. I saw that cool title. Upcoming PvP changes to Star Wars The Old Republic. Right, apparently the guys from the Bad Feeling podcast had a chance to sit down with Alex Modney. Uh, I didn't listen the last two or three weeks of their show. I usually do that, but uh, I'm running late and behind a little bit due to the holiday, you know. <laughs> and let's see. I encourage you to listen to the podcast. Of course, everybody should listen. These are very cool guys, uh, the Bad Feeling podcast. The, the two hosts are awesome, very entertaining and very fun as usual. Let's see what the changes or the proposed changes will be. Uh, General, he's a system designer. For those of us who didn't know him, I personally have heard his name, but never had anything to do or deal with him. So I'm not sure how important this guy is. Hopefully good enough. Uh, yeah, we'll see if they are good. Right, so... Both of them, Alex and Eric Musco, are present. Interesting. Most of these changes will be coming with Game Update 3.3. I wonder if there is at least a round date about this update. In my prediction, it's going to land maybe beginning of July, hopefully. No new PvP maps coming anytime soon. I don't think that's a surprise. A Galactic Starfight is... <laughs> GSF is not dead. They might be doing some balance changes in the future, but no plans for new game modes or new maps. Ooh, that's disappointing. Uh, I, I don't play that, but what, what do the players for the Space PvP have? Uh, two, three maps? Really? Is it? Three maps? Wow. They are changing AoE in war zones. Huh. They can no longer interrupt captures. Right, that's nice. This would be a big gameplay change. No more four storms, death from above, death field, etc. etc. AoE crowd control still works to interrupt the captures. Lovely. Nobody can break the CC. This change is subjected to testing on PTS. How many people do. Two maps? Really? Holy crap. How many people, guys, do you expect will turn up on PTS and test that? My prediction is between 20 and 50 people. That would be the beta test for the PvP changes. Um, in case you didn't catch that from my voice, it's absolutely not enough. PvP gearing, very, very nice things I'm seeing here. Reduction in PvP set gear cost because summer is coming, because people will play less and less during the hot months of the year. Hey, this is my stream, by the, uh, by the way, in case you didn't know. They are hosting me on every single page, including the main page on the website. If you haven't visited SotoArStrategies.com, please do so. They're helping me a lot, and I'm returning the favor. Uh, exhumed reduced by 33%. Wow. So we're going to gear up our alts and mains, in some cases, 33% faster. And the Dark River is reduced by 81%. Interesting. The prices for enhancements mod are staying this, the same, which means if you want a min-max, it's still going to cost you a lot of time and effort, but it's worth it for those who care about min-maxing. Currently, the prices are 400 Warzone comms, and the item rating is uh, uh, for the 168. For the 174 mods, it's 800 ranked and 400 normal Warzone comms. In 3.2, the 168 will cost 150, so down from 400 to 150 and the 170 which is the elite or ranked pvp set will cost you 400 uh, rank comms and 400 normal that's a very nice uh, cut in the pricing only two percent of the game's population has a full set of dark river i think that's more than obvious and since i've been reading a little bit on older articles these past few days Hello everyone, thank you for joining guys. I will turn up the chat overlay in a moment. I don't know why I haven't prepared the screen with uh, my monitor capture and the chat overlay. Blame Vogue, blame Vogue. 
Right, so uh, back on topic, only 2% of the game population has a full set of Dark Riva. I think that's a given since they're calculating these 2% out of everybody playing the game and we know that maybe 0.1% of the free to play are actually doing serious PvP. And uh, obviously they have restrictions. If they want to um, uh, remove the limitations, they have to buy the tokens, they have to pay uh, cartel coins or real money and people don't do that. People who want to do PvP usually ask their subscribers and the more serious subscribe players. Ranked Warzone commendations are removed from the daily weekly and permanently from the game. Uh, really? Ranked war zones will be converted automatically at ratio 1 to 1 when patch 3.3 goes live. Interesting. So you just go to the vendor and you revert your normal comms to ranked comms 1 to 1. And vice versa. Interesting. Very, very good change for the casual players. I'm expecting the hardcore PvPers will moan, whine and complain a lot on this. Or maybe they will be happy because less PvE geared players will ruin their fun. Uh, the Warzone Commendation limit is being raised to... What? Is this 200,000? Cool. 200,000. I'd love to see that and make a screenshot of it. While the ultimate commendations are capped at, uh, what was it? Uh, 300, 400? I don't remember. <laughs> the, the Warzone comms are capped at 200,000. I think that's, that's probably a typo. I can't believe that's true. And if some players has more than that, then there will be a soft cap where the comms will be added, but more can't be gained until under the cap. Uh, that's weird. For players in this extreme situation, <laughs> very, very extreme situation, 300, thank you. For players in, in this extreme situation, they can purchase the new Warzone Com Legacy Lock Boxes. Pfft, detailed below to get under the cap on a certain character. So it's just a um, commendation drop. Uh, I was really planning to do the quests, but if you have a nice idea, Zaz, why not? I could do something. Experience and credit rewards have been increased, doubled, but not 100% certain. I don't understand that. They are doubled, but not certain. Valor is not being affected. Nice. Valor has never been uh, anything but prestige, so it's nice that they are not giving it for free to people. Hi, Yo-Yo. Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Welcome back to me and welcome back to you. I guess you didn't visit me on, um, what was it, Thursday? Adding an official way to transfer comps between characters. You buy a box of 99 commendations for 99 commendations and send to whatever alt you want. Right, because it was really hard to do it with Legacy. Rank PvP. Oh, this is the end actually, there is no more. I was expecting a longer article with a lot more changes. Let's see. For solo rank, you now need 2018 expertise before bolster to join. Wow. Very, very good change. Kudos, Bioware. I'm sure the ranked players will be very happy and solo rank will be a little bit less messy. Or a lot less messy. Uh, group rank have no restrictions. Fun. So, a four people group with PvE gear can still queue up for a group PvP ranked. There will now be season specific tokens, big amount of them. At the end of the season, based on the tier you get, you will no longer gain ranked comms. You will get season-specific tokens throughout the season. At the end of the season, you can buy rewards from all tiers based on your performance. Does that mean that uh, Bioware will not produce specific rewards for the different tiers, but they will allow everybody to buy whatever they want, uh, depending on how many commendations they have? That sounds nice. The tokens are bound to character. They should have been bound to legacy, I think. Or maybe not, because if they're bound to Legacy, that means everybody will be playing the Favor of the Month class and transferring everything to their favorite class after that. The more matches you play, the more tokens you get, so it doesn't depend on your victories. You'll be able to buy Tier 1 rewards even if you only ever get to Bronze. Not bad. Mounts 
might be purchasable even if you only ever get bronze but you have to play a lot these are all variable sacks I, I assume uh, judging by the way they have been described in the notes a new ratio system reward rewards you with tokens and medals winning gives more tokens obviously obviously how much more I'm curious tokens you get in for example season 6 will be usable during season 7 then removed forever by being converted into Warzone Commendations. Oh, that sounds like a little bit too complicated for you, Bioware. Don't get there. You've just straightened up and cleaned up the Commendation system for the game. Now you're starting introducing all kinds of different variable and temporary tokens. Where was I? You have an entire season to spend last season's tokens on rewards, which means between three and four, maybe five months, depending on the season's length. There is going to be one exclusive reward per tier that you need to get X rating to get. Okay. Not the top 96 reward, but something new. Top 96 will get everything. Plus exclusive top 96 as usual. They have looked into adding top 96 per server, but will not happen now. Probably because we are expecting server merges and server changes. Hopefully in the fall, I don't expect anything will happen with the servers during the summer. But uh, there are a lot of uh, complaints and um, notes that some servers, servers have been a ghost town for the last few months or year. Uh, I'm thinking specifically right now about uh, what was the name of one of the US PvP servers. Prophecy of the Five. I've seen people mentioning that server as a completely dead and you have five people in one instance on the fleet. Remember, you can find me also on Twitch, Twitter and Facebook. For my non-Star Wars activities, I invite you to subscribe to my second YouTube channel.